Yeah, yeah, we got something to grab on. We were fishing a lot. We just, you know, got to measure up people to see how tall they actually are, which everybody here is taller than me on this show tonight, so damn, that sucks. Uh, but yeah, we need one of these things. This one's the weirdest one of all because it's like in your face, so appreciate that. Uh, yeah, welcome everybody. We're doing a little Black Friday comedy night. Yeah, give yourself a hand. Been at the Northwest Cannabis Club and threw out all the shopping extravaganzas, right? Who went to the sales? All of them. Yeah, what'd you get? Everything. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy it all. Just be... I've got six extra flat screens. Hit me up after the show. All right, hit up flat screens. Hit up, hit up Primo. All right, uh, this comic that I'm going to bring up, I'm going to just get this show rolling because I know we're all here to see a show. Uh, this comic that I'm actually going to bring up right now, we're all high, so just bear with me for a second as I work out the kinks. <coughs> this next guy, he runs a local showcase called The uh, Real Comedy Spot. His name is The Real <laughs> Hijinks, everybody, all the way from North Carolina. Actually, <laughs> I totally messed that up. He's been here for a while. He's been here for a while. We've done a lot of shows together. Give it up for Hijinx, everybody! Woo! What's good? Yo! Yo. Yeah. He is so high right now. Uh, uh, I've actually been here before. I feel like this is my homecoming. <laughs> I've not been here in a very, very long time. <laughs> it just smells like home, man. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Anytime you walk in and people hand you a, a joint before they shake your hand, I fucking love it here. Right. This, is, this is just amazing. It's been a long time since I performed here, but it's good to be back. It's good to see a couple familiar faces, a lot of new people. I don't remember this guy. We've done shows here. You don't know me. We've done here. So, some of y'all don't know me. So let's get to know me, all right? My name is High Jinx. All right? I'm 45 years old. Married 21 years. Wow. Right, 21 years, like long walks on the beach, uh-huh, like ice cream and cake, and I smoke a shit ton of weed, right? Yeah. That's very important. I love weed. Weed is, for, actually, as we can see, it's fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Especially the weed here in Portland. I love this weed here in Portland. That's why I've been married 21 years, the weed here in Portland. <laughs> because this weed here is great. Wherever the fuck this weed says, that's exactly what it does. And that's why I love the Portland weed. I smoked some weed the other day called You Gonna Lose Your Fucking Job. <laughs> that was the name of the weed. I still smoked it and guess what? I lost my fucking job. So now I'm looking for a strain of weed called Good Credit. I'm just trying to 420 my way into an 820 record score, uh, credit score. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to be all right. But it's helped my marriage too. Cause I. Uh, uh, what, uh, okay. All right. Is it? He fucking with me. The sound guy can't be high. One of us gotta be sober in this bitch tonight. At least one of us. <laughs> There's nobody in here, everybody's out. <laughs> weed has helped my relationship. Like, that's why I've been married 21 years, because of weed. Because I had this strain of weed the other day called Helen Keller. That's right. I smoked this shit, I couldn't hear or see a goddamn thing. So I didn't give a fuck what was going on in my house. My homeboy came over to the house, my kids was tearing up the house. He's like, hey man, you ain't gonna tell your kids to calm their ass down? <laughs> Smoking that Helen Keller, dog. <laughs> I don't hear see a goddamn thing. I don't give a fuck. It was wonderful. So my wife come in the house. She was like, hey, they gonna tell these kids to calm the fuck down? Smoking that Helen Keller, baby. I don't hear see shit. A few minutes later, I look over. She was rolling something up. I was like, hey, baby, what's that? She said, I'm the rain of Bobby. Oh, shit. I said, your weed a little bit stronger than mine. I'm going to put my shit down and go check on the kids. That's what the fuck I'm going to do. <laughs> I love it, but it's kept my marriage going. I love being married. I am so high right now. This is unremarkable. This is unbelievable. I'm a, I smoke one joint, and I feel like I have smoked seven blunts right now. This is, is it cloudy in here, or am I just seeing shit? Is it, which one? It's cloudy? Oh, uh, glasses. It's my glasses? 
Yeah, they're, they're very, as you see, it's it's still cloudy. It's not the glass, man. This it's smoky as fuck up in here, man. This is what you smoking on? You don't want to know. Yeah, I do want to know. What you got? <laughs> you got the good stuff? I'm gonna come to see you when I get off the stage, all right? All right. I'm gonna hold you to that. Don't make me fall into your car. I will. Okay. Everybody just coughing. This is beautiful. Yeah, like I said, married 21 years. And I love being married 21 years. You know what I'm saying? And I want to tell everybody in here, when you're married that long, you got to keep do shit to keep the, the sex life excited. Because after 21 years, it can't get boring. So for my 20th anniversary last year, my wife gave me the ultimate. She gave me my first threesome. Yeah. Actually, no. It was not It was bad. I learned two very important things. Fellas, if you're in a threesome and two women are going in it hot and heavy, you don't just jump your ass in there. You wait your goddamn turn. For the first 30 minutes of the threesome, I was on the side of the bed looking like a game of double dutch. I was just like... Oh, no, 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 not, not yet. I'll have me. Hold on. Oh, I'm in there. I got that ass. Yeah. Wait your turn. I'll just jump in there. Now, the second thing I learned is if you don't do it right, you can hear disappointment in surround sound like, no, stop, no, no, no. <laughs> so get it right. But for my anniversary, one of my friends gave me this book that, uh, my, you know, it's called, uh, some of you may have heard of it, The Karma Sutra. Has anybody ever heard of that book? Yeah, it's like all the different sex positions and shit like that. Yeah, that's a cool book. Not when you're 45. No, I don't bend like that, you know? That's just too much fucking work. So another one of my friends, they gave me this book called the uh, Afro Sutra. All the sex moves are named after predominant black leaders in history. And my wife fucking loves this book. Yeah. The first move we did in the book was the Martin Luther King. Yeah, that's why I smack her on one cheek till she turns to the other cheek. Oh, God. Oh. Y'all high. Y'all, y'all, it'll hit you when you get home. <laughs> on the way home, you're just gonna be like, oh. <laughs> she loved it. The other move we used to do in the book was the Malcolm X. Yeah. That's where I made her come by any means necessary. <laughs> Sometimes I wasn't even in on the play, just on the side of the bed, like, good job, Jesus Christ, he is going to work tonight, god damn. <laughs> Way to go, stretch it out, don't get your cramps, stretch it out. Yeah. The last move we used to do was her favorite, she loved this one. It was called the Rosa Parks. Yeah, that's where she sat on my face and refused to get up, just... We're going to do this other move called the George Washington Carver. It was something about nuts, but we never got around to it. it just... Please go home and try each one of those positions tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you. Uh, try them twice during February for Black History Month. Uh, that's, I'm, just, I'm just saying. Yeah. I've been in Portland for uh, since like 97. Like, I've been out here a long ass time, so I'm officially a Portlander, I guess. Uh, one thing I love about people from Portland, you guys are fucking passionate. Y'all are so passionate. And it's, it's starting to become y'all time of the year. You know what that is, right? For the passionate Portland people? It's right, protest season. Because Portland is some protesting motherfuckers. They don't care what it is, they protest. The sun come out, it's too hot, they're like, too much sun, too much sun. Really, motherfucker? Just <laughs> start the rain, they're like, stop the rain, stop the rain, like, god damn. They always protesting. And I love that about it. But you know what? I can't protest with y'all. It's not personal. That shit is just downtown, too close to jail. That's all I'm saying, all right? You get arrested down there, they don't even put you in the cop car. They just walk your ass to jail. I can't do that. So when y'all protest, I am protesting with y'all. 
I'm just on 102nd and Halton. That way, when y'all start going to jail, I keep the movement going. It's all about location, location, location. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Plus, I can't go to jail. I'm a cute motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Bad things happen to cute people in jail. I heard. Have you ever heard that saying in jail, don't drop the soap? Like, you ever heard that? Woo. Fuck that. I go to jail today, I drop the soap, I will kick that shit all the way back to my cell. You got me fucked. I am not picking up no, 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 not me, not me. I'll be the first person in jail with body wash. <laughs> Won't catch me slipping. I am so high. Okay, what's your uh, uh, favorite form of weed intake? Oh, yes. I mean, not what type of smoking? Blood? Most of us are divers. Most of you. Because that shit is dangerous, okay? <laughs> that shit is dangerous. I learned my lesson right here in this fucking venue. They was having some kind of... They had all these different um, vendors here. Like, it was a shitload of vendors here that was had all this wax and oils. And I got to sample each and every fucking one of them. I dabbed... 12 o'clock in the afternoon to 8 o'clock at night. I got to sample over 60 to 65 different oils, waxes, and everything. I even smoked out of the, uh, do y'all still have it, the Trident? They used to have a Trident here with a three-prong Trident, and they put the whole big-ass thing of wax on it all at once. I was so hot. I slept the next day for, I didn't wake up for 48 hours. 48 hour coma. It was remarkable. Best fucking sleep I have ever had. Best sleep. I owe it to this place. I have never slept so well. I mean, so much weed. I mean, I don't know how I woke up. I just, uh, I just woke up with a glass of water, butt naked. I don't know what the fuck happened in between. Just. I'm just naked with water. I was like, I must be, I'm either thirsty or this is a badass dream. I do not know what the fuck is going on. I learned my lesson. Can't come here. Another thing I learned, you can't smoke with everybody. Some of y'all are fucking professionals and that shit ain't fair. Right? You don't tell us that shit coming in. You don't tell us. That was my first time dabbing. I had never dabbed before. Never. Yeah, see that laugh right there? That's the laugh I got every time somebody say, hit this, hit this. <laughs> he just kept reaching over to his feet. Wait for it, just wait for it. There it is. Right. Y'all should have instructions next to that shit. Don't hold it in. I didn't know. I'm a blunt smoker, so I like you hold that shit to get the high end. Yeah, I held that shit in too long. I coughed up a lung, a liver, every fucking thing. That was the first I coughed for 45 minutes, non fucking stop. 45 minutes! Yeah! And the sad part is, motherfuckers here were still trying to get me down. Here, man, come on, man. Shit, come on. Don't be no quitter. Come on, hit this, man. Come on. It's remarkable how much y'all smoke. No, peer pressure. Uh, you know, it ain't, it ain't peer pressure. My mom just didn't raise no quitters, so I'm gonna smoke with all y'all motherfuckers. Fuck that. We gonna get high, we gonna get high together. It's been beautiful. I had so much. It's just, man. I am so high, and I still have two more shows to do tonight. Oh, I hope they have food in my next show. I swear to God. I just, I'm just gonna be in somebody's refrigerator like, is that turkey? Hold on, just let me just. Oh, this is remarkable. I just wanna come here and take a nap and inhale. I don't even want to So I'm just. There we go, okay, there it goes. Yeah, I don't know, is it, is it the batteries or is it? Am I too close, far from the system? It's like a CB radio. Is the, is the microphone hot? Is that what the vibe? It's new? Okay, it's fine, man. I'm almost done now. Are you looking for something? What you? 
You cut and shit? You got some weed up there. You, where? Yeah. <laughs> I smoked with him before. He's the one that got me on the fucking tri hit. I don't know how the fuck I let him talk me into it. But it was, it was, y'all don't, y'all don't have that here nowhere? Okay, I don't know. I was high, so I don't even remember names. I just, it's all a fucking blur. <laughs> Guys, uh, I made a lot of jokes up here tonight. And, uh, like I said, I've been married 21 years, and it's beautiful. And uh, I want to tell every person in here, you know, because I was told when you get married, they say the sex stops. They say you don't get it no more. It doesn't happen. I want to tell everybody in here, 21 years, I get it when I want, where I want, any time I want, any place I want. That's right. But if my wife catch me in that bitch, she going to kill us both. I swear to God. I'm a real high chief. That's my time. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the real high jinx. Keep it going. The real high jinx. It's going on to do the Ha Ha Comedy Festival. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? No, I just came from there. Just came from there. <laughs> going to do a birthday party. Skinny dipping show. Then going back to yeah. And then in February you got the Northwest Black uh, Comedy Festival. Yeah. Yeah. Biggity boom. Uh, he's looking for sponsors. Everybody hit him up. Looking for that. Uh, I think Jensen's gonna be up here while we're doing some. Last minute, two second microphone check stuff. I don't trust it. Yeah, it still doesn't work. Trading the duct, I like the duct tape on the end of the one. It's working all right. Hello, hello, hey, that works too. All right, we can turn this one off. I like a cord better anyways. All right, give it up one more time everybody for the real hygiene. Here you go, Jensen. Give it up for Jensen, sound guy engineer. Clifford. Whipper. Two claps. Yeah, two, two claps. He gets it. Hell yeah. There goes, oh man, the real hijinks. Me and hijinks are like, I blanked out earlier because I'm just like, ah, flashy lights, the mic's cutting out, what's going on? This is all crazy. Jensen looks like he's mad, always, but hell yeah. Don't beat him up. No, he's going to go thank him. Right on. Well, give a round of applause, you guys, for yourself for being here. The Black Comedy Festival, or no, this isn't the Black Comedy Festival. This is the Black, the Black Friday Show. Too many, you know, say that three times fast, huh? I challenge y'all. It's the Black Comedy Show on Black Friday. Uh, what we're doing? You know what? Eat your spaghetti, kid. All right. <laughs> Find your French bread, all right, motherfucker. <laughs> How dare you? I said no. Sorry, it wasn't spaghetti. Whatever it was, I didn't read it off the menu when you're fucking picking it off your go Uber, Uber. Hell yeah. Well, welcome to that. Uh, like I said, and Jensen said earlier, I'm Boomer. Hi, Jinx. Jamal's gonna be coming up earlier. Who's here for to see Jamal? Who's friends with Jamal? Buys weed from Jamal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know my number to, to book me, but he knows my number to enter in those discounts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that 15%. What's up? <laughs> uh, Hi, Jinx was talking about uh, being married. Where are my married people at? Woo! Yeah, where are my divorces? Hey. Woo! Oh, normally. It's that's right, normally I'm dealing with a bunch of drunks that are all divorced. Mar <laughs> Marriage and marijuana is like, a, it's instant. It's like, here, shut up. All right. <laughs> I've seen it here happen live uh, tonight. <laughs> Probably again later. That's a very intimate show. I know everybody, so it's crazy. I uh, hope you're not recording that. This is going to be awkward at high school reunions and stuff. <laughs> It's awesome. Uh, yeah, let's get it. I, I know what you guys are all thinking simultaneously. You're like, damn, that lesbian has great hair. Woo! <laughs> yeah. It's in your head, you're conditioned that way, all right? Trust me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Somebody who's old remembers that commercial. That's crazy. Oh, what's up? Of course. <laughs> yeah. 
It's crazy, you guys. I get that shit all the time. You know, like some people are like, yeah, that joke's got to bounce, bro. Get that shit cut. Buzz it. See you later. <laughs> My brother's like that, right? We just celebrated Veterans Day and Turkey Day and all that. And he's at the dinner table. He's like, yeah, bro, you didn't even get that shit cut. High and tight, high and tight. Ooh, raw! I'm like, whoa, here's a CBD gummy. Simmer down. We're stateside. Shit. But now I'm like, nah, it's Portland, dude. The only thing I'm gonna keep high and tight on me is my brain and my booty. High and tight, high and tight, all night. Hoorah! <laughs> Talk that shit to my niece and nephews instead of Twinkle Twinkle because he hates that. It's like, high and tight, high and tight. It's crazy, I know. You guys are all high, I'm high. Some people are drunk. Not right now, I hope. Uh, maybe, I don't know. You never know. But yeah, Portland's just crazy. So it's like, I just want to live a normal life, you guys. But I'm like a cartoon stuffed in human skin. Like everybody, it doesn't matter where I'm at, where I go, it's, it's, it's all or nothing. Like you guys ever been mammed at a Costco? Right? Dude walks up, excuse me ma'am, can I get a quarter? Hey, here's 25 pennies and a slap. Enjoy your free samples, bitch. Get out of here. This is. You know, I want to go downtown on a Sunday, go to this Inferno night, check out Dante's, be all keeping it weird. Without some dude with a thick Bigelow accent be like, excuse me, are you boy or girl? <laughs> what, bitch? I'm... Well, let's see that bank account. Booty donuts is across the street. We can get married. We living in Dubai, driving a Ferrari. <laughs> it's my Ferrari sound effect, like I'm a fucking kid on a rug, just... <laughs> Uh, just want to live the normal life. Go into the safe way, type in my clip card number without the dude having me on his seat and hassling me. Be like, here you go, Miss Fisher. Have a nice day. Right? I'm pissed. I'm livid. I'm like, what, bitch? That's Ms. Fisher? I'm available. What's up? Put those quartz ice cream in the basket. Please. Don't fuck around with points or pints, you guys. Points are not pints. Pints are not points. I'm high, I'm eating some fucking water. <laughs> I need a little stool, Jensen. That's all Jensen. Stool me. Oh. <laughs> you sick bastards. I'm just kidding, I'll just set this right here, right? We're all, we're all family. Yeah, where was I? Back on the fucking, the, the Miss Fisher thing. Yeah, it's like, bye Miss Fisher. You know, I was like, I know you guys are all sitting there. I do parties because of all this lookalike shit. I get it all the time. Like, I'm going, if you're in college, kicking your frat door, everybody's like, oh my God, it's one of the kids from Mighty Ducks. Doesn't matter which one, the movie or the characters. Like, one through three, the goalie, the girl, it doesn't matter. I'll be all of them. So, yeah, it passes. He's really drunk. It's awesome. I love that new kids party. Who has kids? <laughs> Be surprised how many people get trapped. No, <laughs> uh, I do kids parties. You guys, it's great. Do kids parties. All the little girls run around me in a little circle, like, "Oh my God, it's Ursula from the Little Mermaid." <laughs> Minus the white hair and the tentacles, I'm still like, "Come here, girl. I'll show you my eel." Ah. <laughs> balloon animal, you sick perverts. My eel balloon animal. It's the easiest to make. What are you uh, crazy? You crazy? I don't do kids. Court ordered. <laughs> that judge is a dick. You guys want to know how long it's been since I haven't seen my kids? Or, no, I don't have any kids. My nephews are on Skype. I fucked that joke up. <laughs> fucked my life up, too, if that comes. Knock on wood. No kids. <laughs> I don't have any kids. Don't want to mess that up by throwing something into the mix and the jokes, you know? That'd be horrible. And actually, probably wouldn't be that bad. It'd be like a dog, right, Harry? <laughs> I'll feed you later. Uh, no, I love it. Uh, <laughs> you guys ever see two fat people hugging and want to draw a chalk circle around them to see which one to push the other one out first? <laughs> Call that one sumo hug. I figure I can make those jokes. I used to be a fat kid. You guessed it, now I'm a chubby adult. That's here though, you guys. It's all perspective and terminology. Be whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Steve's 20 years old. Yeah. Living in an 80 year old body. Be whatever you want, bro. Love you for it. I love Steve. Uh, uh, it's crazy, because, like, when you're a fat kid, you learn things that you don't when you're a skinny prick, or is which I, what I call my brother growing up. 
uh, like how to tie your shoes at such a young age, you know, because you're still sitting there eating Thanksgiving <coughs> dinner, and he's learning and making fun of you, like, dude, are you breathing heavy and grunting? That shit's Velcro, Boomer. Lift and strap. One and two. Yeah, too real, huh? All right. Too real. Uh, I loved it. I, I, uh, I played sports. Where are, my, where are my sports people at? Woo! Yeah, I played sports. It's great. You got the athletic socks right. Bam. Love them. Knee highs. Ladies, you got them. Thigh highs. Got those. Leggings, jeggings, up to the neck. Yeah. It's just that, like a guy my age and my weight, I can't have those things anymore, you know? Got one thing, compression fit. So, try not to lose any limbs to the sugars, you know? Just try not to do that. It's horrible stuff. Um, get back to the lookalike stuff, right? So that it's out of your head real quick. I know you're like, oh my God, it's like weird owl step kid or something. Like, still putting up paternity tests, but denies them every time. Or, it's like Carrot Top's weird cousin or stepbrother. <laughs> Uh, it's like Gallagher's like test tube baby, right? Like it came out right. Here's a watermelon. <laughs> Get the look alike shit. I'm telling you guys. Portland's a big pirate town, so everybody thinks I look like Jack Sparrow from Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I ate myself. No. I tried doing that, and I just look like Ron Jeremy when I'm down there, right? Come back up, I'm like oh my god, it's definitely not him. There's no bulge. <laughs> Lies and stuff looking at my crotch. Uh, love it. Uh, look at like it's so easy. It's like you perform with someone that's Canadian, all of a sudden you're Louis the Fourteenth. You know, it's like I'm not him or a descendant. I, that'd be cool. I'm supposed to be a descendant of like. I got a family history that's like, my dad's like, yeah, I did the 23.com or whatever, whatever the thing is, and uh, we're supposed to have over 100 people of royalty in our family. I'm like, really? And we have a sister that's in jail and one that lives under a bridge? And I'm doing comedy at a weed club or something like that? It's like, one, all right, dad. He's like, no, check out these pictures. Doesn't that look like me? It's, so, it's horrible, too, because it's like, yeah, I'm high, Dad. I played this trick on the audience all the time. Everybody looks like us. <laughs> it's horrible. So he's got a picture of, like, him. And, of course, the devil is real, so he's got a twin. And so he, like, played tricks on people. He's like, yeah, look, this is us. Like, back in the day, uh, Spaniards and shit. And it's a tapestry. And I'm like, where's our scepter, then? At least a fucking scepter. Like, pass it down. Welcome. Oh, what's up, Kenny? How are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Get stuck, Culver. Get too high at the club, you get just stuck doing mating calls to Kenny. So you really don't want. I performed at a lot of different places. This, of course, is one of a couple weed clubs. Uh, I'm trying to get my Chinese Zodiac calendar filled up for comedy, you know, I got the, uh, performed at the Elks Lodge, the Moose Lodge, the Eagles Lodge, I need a Dragon Lodge and a Cock Lodge, or Dis Lodge, I guess, to fill that bad boy up and then I'm all set. Uh, thank you, Tad, for being here. <laughs> I have a bobblehead from my mom that I collected from a mobile home that we got when we were at a fucking trailer park. Like, these are the things. I'm not gonna have a kid. Who am I gonna? I mean, here you go. This is your legacy. Live it and love it. Never forget. Fuck. Uh, that's why I teach my niece and nephews eye and tight. Get them fucked up. Hell yeah, what's that smell? That's Uncle Boomer's pre-funk gravy. No, you can't have none, it's for adults only. Dabbing all sauce. Uh, I love it. Portland's cool, I love Portland. I've been in Portland forever. 
Uh, it's weird. Like, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself before I talk about porn. By talking shit about my parents. Uh, so my mom used to be a go-go dancer. Yeah, yeah, guessed it. That's where my moves come from. My dad, he's a biker. Yeah, naturally makes me bored to be sad. You know, yeah. We've all seen Sons of Anarchy. It doesn't end well. Except for the teacher, the Hispanic guys, they get another show. Spinoff, No Sons of Anarchy, The Half Sons, The Legacy of the Bobblehead. Nobody's watching that on the TNT Sunday. Oh, the AMC channel, come on. It's like, Mom's great, and she's not here anymore. That's a cool sub uh, segue. Is that what that's called when you just bring up your mom's death? Uh, yeah, but it's weird. It's how you can't you can't like slide. You can't like free roll. You can't like slide in a my mom died thing bit. You just gotta bring it up and roll with it. Hope the audience sticks it through, and we we wake after the wake and get back. <laughs> She would approve. She loved this shit. She would. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Cause here's my mom. Like, my mom. <laughs> like when we were young. Uh, oh fuck that. I don't know. I'm just gonna tell the joke. Here's my. When you have a mom like my mom, she's crazy, right? Like, I got a bunch of unanswered questions. I got things when she died that we cleared out under her bed that no person, man or woman, should ever find. That's how it took me back to being 14. That's like my high pitched voice right there. Just, <laughs> peaked up it's like you never want to find a briefcase of your mom's dildos yeah yeah you never right hey i'm saying you never want to tell anybody also the goodwill that you left them at yeah these are things that mom leaves you with you know a little rubber-made container with weed in it her boyfriend don't know about. He does know about that. <laughs> you know, like, weird things. Like, she left me a CD collection with three Creed CDs. Yeah. Not different Creed CDs. All the same Creed CDs. Two of them unopened. Unopened. Like the dildos, the weed, I can accept those in my life. But how am I going to accept three Creed CDs? You guessed it. With our arms wide open. No dildos. Uh, truth is comedy, you guys. It's all, it's, it's real life stuff. Uh, it's crazy. It's real life. Real life stuff, you guys. Like, bam, Portland tattoos, real life. Somebody commented on my tattoo earlier. John, I think it was you right in the back. I don't know. Somebody was like, cool tattoo. That's my dog. Boom. That's his name was Dodger, but that's him. Uh, Portland ironic tattoo. Dog tattoo. Boom. Got one. Anybody else got a dog tattoo? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Yeah, mine was preempted. Yeah. I got my tattoo before my dog died. So I was like, bro, just one more notch. Let's get it. No, I didn't fuck with him like that. <laughs> How about this? Portland ironic tattoo, pirate ship. Yeah. 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 Never sailed a single sea. Not yeah. a one through seven. <laughs> Never sailed a single sea. Have been to all seven seas candy stores in the greater Northwest Pacific area. What's up? <laughs> Punch card filled. Water bottle knocked over. Score. <laughs> Love it. Another weird, ironic Portland tattoo. 365. Uh, my old football number. <laughs> I know you guys are laughing because you're like, it's only two numbers. Unless you're fat and your coach is a dick. <laughs> yes and yes. Didn't matter. Coach was a dick. He's like, yeah, 365 looks like your size. We call you every day. Every day, come on out. Let's do it. No. <laughs> Actually, 365 was the most I weighed in my entire life, you guys. 365 pounds. What's up? Yeah. I know you guys are like, shit. And you're an asshole for saying that. <laughs> but you'd be glad to know, asshole, that I've lost over 100 pounds. Suck it. Yeah, suck it, Julian Michaels. Woo. 
Yeah, I swear. I used to love the word burp until she added IES to it and made me drop and give her 20. I'm like, I hate you in life. <laughs> More vegetables, please, I guess. Uh, it's crazy, you guys. Like, you lose that much weight. Like, first off, like, if you're gonna lose that much weight, go and consult your physician, right? Because that's what you're supposed to do. That's what the TV shows say or whatever. Like, go and consult your physician. Because if anything, uh, it's gonna be funny as hell. Like, I walk in, I, I walk in to go see my doctor, uh, and I'm like, yo, doc, what's wrong with me? He's like, well, you don't eat well, ever, in your entire life. I'm like, well, damn, that's rude. I'm like, well, hook me up, it's Portland, bro. Help me out, give me one of those weed cards or something. He's like, uh-uh. Signs this sheet of paper, right? Hands it to me. Like, I'm high now, like I'm high then. I'm reading the paper and CNN says, eat better. <laughs> Sign Dr. Fuckface. Oh, it's just you, Emmanuel Providence. Yeah. But like I said, you guys, I'm high. I'm high. I'm this high. So I thought the paper said, eat butter. Oh, it's Dr. Pancakes. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. Mine's, it's, it's a crazy thing, you guys. You lose that much weight, like I lost over 100 pounds, gained some back, lost, lost more, whatever. It's a constant battle. It's always a battle. Life's a battle. Ah, gravity. Uh, but it's like, when you lose that much weight, your whole perspective changes, your life changes, and you see things differently. Like, uh, I got this thing at home. I call it a goddamn son of a bitch, piece of shit, bastard. Amazon calls it a full length mirror. <laughs> I'm looking at the thing and I'm like seeing myself now I'm like hey what's up how's it going thinking about how I used to look like oh bye bye see you later you know it's like crazy like back then I had these sweet jowls right it's great for Thanksgiving call them noisemakers just ah scare the kids love them. <laughs> now I got this semi sweet like sort of soft jaw sort of good for shaving every five days Works. You know, back in the day, I used to be like, yo, what's up? We were nice, right? Honk, honk. I'm just kidding. I wasn't that cruel and crass. I'd be like, yo, boomer, nice breast. Honk, honk. Ooga. Yeah. Nowadays, I'm like, yo, boomer, nice chest. <laughs> Where's the beach? I don't know. I'll never find it. But I know, depending on my perspective and your, oh, wait, my posture, your perspective. I got both, right? Breast and shit. Uh, that's a tough titties joke right there. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to be like, yo, what's up, Mayor? Piece of shit. I got a dick. I got a dick, what's up? How you doing? Sorry, Steve, I'm not looking at you, but I'm just uh, to cast my eyes over this way, I guess, then. What's up, lion statue in the mirror? I got a dick. Okay, I got, this is too long for a bit. <laughs> and in my head, because I'm high, it's taking forever in this cosmic universe that we live in. So I'm like, oh, Mirror, I got a dick. And then back in this life, I'm like, Mirror, I got a dick. I got a dick. <laughs> Nobody ever chants. Nobody ever. You guys are all too busy thinking, why is a penguin from Batman Returns yelling about his dick right now? <laughs> Thank you guys very much. My name is, uh, Boo, you know what my name is. My name is Boomer, that's it for me. I'm gonna, yeah. This is always the inner, uh, most fun part of the show where I stop exactly what I'm doing on a dime and then pass it over to the next guy. Actually, Jensen, do you want me to make some announcements while I'm up here killing time? We sound good. This is a good microphone setup. It's going, minus the duct tape and the red pubic hairs. <laughs> Ron's Playhouse was up here during Thanksgiving, apparently. Doing a little charity funds for... Uh, there's some events coming up, right, Jensen? Yeah, the 7th we have... You want to announce them, or you want me to... You Canagar Wars on the 7th. Canagar Wars on the 7th? Okay. Holiday Canagar Wars, December 7th. I see a couple of Canagar fans and makers out there. Wink, wink. Yeah, you clap it up. Uh, so that's going down on the seventh. What else is good? There's two categories. Okay. Seven grams. Two two categories up to seven grams. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. 
And then tomorrow, Country Cannabis. Oh, that's right. And then tomorrow, Country Cannabis, where we're going to be doing a uh, live uh, nude uh, line dancing show. No nude. Sp no, not nude. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I was getting was mixing up my words. Uh, I'm just really excited about the line dancing show tomorrow. Uh, so there's going to be an all-male review line dancing show tomorrow, sponsored by Serenity Vapor Lounges. Personally, personally headline. Calling out my friends right now. Right in the living room. So. December 16th. December 16th. Oh, hell yeah. Jamal, yeah, besides coming up here uh, after my shenanigans now, uh, Jamal's going to be coming up uh, December 17th, you say, for the next installment of... What's that? That's what I said, 16th, December 16th, the next installment of the Canna Family Feud. That's right, Canna Family Feud. The Boomer and the Boys team is gonna take it home. Rule that! Yeah, what's up? Uh, cause, you know, Canna Family Feud's for the boys. Uh, all right, I think without further ado, uh, if Jamal is ready, this is a really cool introduction. Uh, you might have seen him at TJ's. He's the local. Now he's local. I don't know how long he's been here, but he's been in LA performing for a long time. Uh, he's. You can see his stuff on, I'm sure, YouTube and Instagram. He's all over the place. Ladies and Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. What I meant to say is, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Jamal Coleman. Somebody get him a snack. His blood pressure is low. He needs some peanut butter right now. He's gonna pass out of some shit. Uh, clap for yourselves for getting out the house. Oh my god, you made it out the house. You can be at home streaming Netflix and jacking off, but you made it out the house, so good for you guys. Uh, we learned a lot today. Um, we learned that some people's weed tolerance are different than others. That's what we learned. That's what I learned anyway. Uh, I, Boomer, to answer your question, I moved out here last September. I have been in the Pacific Northwest touring Washington and Oregon for one year and a couple months now. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, thank you. This is the warmest reception I've ever gotten. I've got to tell people I'm from California. <laughs> This is like, I love Oregon, I love Portland. This is everybody in Portland that is like super open-hearted and liberal and open-minded and, and is really cool. You guys love everybody out here. You like all the letters, the LGDP, the Q, the Qs. You like all the letters. Witches, there you guys, witches, come in, witches. You guys live here, witches too, witches can live. But as soon as I'm like, hey guys, I'm from California. They're like, get the fuck out, get out of here. I'm sorry. It's been fun. Um, there is a lot of um, uh, white people here. <laughs> In case you guys didn't notice, that shit is real. It's like jury duty everywhere I go. It's, I feel like a defendant everywhere. I'm, like, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I'm arrested? Did I do it? I did do it. I did it. I'm sorry. It's been fun. <laughs> It's been helping me face my fears. It's been helping me face my fears. It's like uh, large, large groups of white people are scary. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like right now, if everybody just said "yeehaw" right now, I shit myself. <laughs> On the count of three, let's do it. One, two, three. Yeehaw! Thank you, helping me face my fears. Thank you. Are you okay? I'm good. My heart's beating real hard, but I'm good. How are you doing? Uh. I did the Space Needle. I'm scared of heights. Anybody else scared of heights? Yeah. Scared of heights? Not everybody understands. It's like, I'm not actually scared of heights. It's just my body shuts down when I get to like three stories or higher. Like, I'm fine. I'm like, oh man, this is a great view. This is a great view. This is a, I love this view. This is great. This is really cool. And you just crawl all the way back into your car. That's what it's like being scared of heights. So I was like, fuck it, we're gonna get on the Space Needle. I'm gonna face my fears. And I was on the elevator, and we were getting higher and higher, and I was cool. I was cool, I was like, this is cool. 
I'm good. Look at that. You can see the boats from here. This is nice. It's good. It's good. All the way to the top on the tower. They have glass that leans over the top of the tower. I'm leaning up against the wall, the opposite end of the glass. But it was, I was fine. Look at the sun. The sun's setting. This is beautiful. Look at the look at the water in the boats. <laughs> people, normal people, are jumping on the glass, like taking pictures on the glass, hanging on the glass. So I'm just like, stop trying to kill us. <laughs> It was good, that was cool, it wasn't that bad, it wasn't that bad. Until they were like, hey, you guys can go downstairs, there's a restaurant downstairs in the tower, and they got food down there. And I was like, you know, I'm a little famished, I can eat a hot dog or something. They didn't tell you that there's a glass floor in this restaurant that rotates at the top. I didn't know that, so it kind of caught me by surprise. I was like, yeah, let's see if they got some hot dogs. And I looked down and there's this glass, and I saw an SUV the same size as my toe. <laughs> I just started going, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I gotta get off of this tower right now! So I crawled over to the elevator and I was like, can somebody hit the, the button? I gotta, I can't reach it with my foot. And nobody wanted to hit the button. Everybody's a dick in Seattle. I was like, hey, could you just. I'm just sitting on the elevator like this the whole time. I'm like, hey. You guys enjoying your trip? <laughs> Then I got some fun, okay. It was a good show. It was a good day. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I just found out that uh, Washington State smokes the most weed in the world. They analyze all the urine of the state. And they figured out that Washington State smokes more weed than everybody else in the world. More than Oregon, more than wherever you think people smoke a lot of weed. We're not tested. You guys, you don't think they tested your pee either? No. I'm pretty sure they tested all the pee. But whose job was that though? That was fun. <laughs> I'll skip it. I'm trying to be healthier. That's uh, always a challenge. Uh, I got tired of waking up every morning sounding like a Korean man. Every morning I just like, oh, that. Style every morning. <laughs> so I went to the chiropractor. I got a chiropractor trying to get my back right. He was like, "Hey, I, you have like a did an extra. I got like an extra joint or something in my lower back. It gives me like arthritis or something." And he was like, "You might need surgery, but you might not. No big deal." And I was like, "Whoa! What do you mean? I might need surgery. I'm getting the surgery. I need to get it. I gotta get the surgery. I'm gonna do it." I didn't know which surgery it was, but I was just convinced I needed to get it. Uh, he told me I needed a balls reduction. I needed a balls reduction. You ladies know what I'm talking about. Look, um... Trying to be healthier. I got a squatty potty trying to be healthier. Anybody got a squatty potty? Okay, we got some squatty potty ears in here. Clap if you do not know what a squatty potty is. You don't know how to follow directions either. No, just <laughs> 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 the squatty potty is a stool. It's like a U-shaped stool that you put at the base of your toilet. Cause apparently uh, the whole world and your parents never taught you how to shit right. You like <laughs> everybody else in the world they shit on holes like this, right? You're supposed to be in the Spider-Man stance. <laughs> Right? The squatty potty helps you get in the Spider-Man stance. I discovered the squatty potty. I went to my friend's house. I was at the friend's house at a house party with my girl. And we were like, hey, da, da. And I was like, hey, man, you think I can use your bathroom? I gotta pee for a real long time. <laughs> he was like, yeah, just go down the hallway. And, blah, blah, blah. and I was like, yes, woo! And I was like, what is this device? Climbed up on it, and I was like, it's a squatty putty. <laughs> blah, 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 turbo turds, best shit of my life. Look. <laughs> you gotta get one. It's great, it's fantastic, it's fantastic. Immediately went into the living room with my girlfriend. I was like, hey man, he's got this thing in the bathroom, it's a squatty putty. It was amazing, best shit of my life. She was like, just go uh, talk to him about it and see how much it is. And I, and he, <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> 
just my co-worker. I'm not gonna go in there and tell him I took a gangster in his bathroom. <laughs> So I just start showing up at his house every day with coffee in the morning. <laughs> he said, hey man, I was in the neighborhood, we got some coffee. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> you know how coffee do. You think I can use your bathroom? <laughs> After about five days of doing that, he started like, going, Hey Jamar, you can't just keep coming over my bathroom and taking shits, man. It's like, I'm sorry, you got that squatty party. I can't even go anywhere else. I can't even, I gotta get the right lift. And he was like, dude, you can just buy one. They're like $29.99. I was like, I'm not rich. What is it? I asked him if he had the box. I was like, you have the box? He said, yeah, I got the box. He grabbed the box for me. I took the box. I cut a hole in it. I put it on my toilet. I said, now I got my own squatty party. <laughs> But then I clocked the toilet and I got the box wet and then it started laying into the side. I tried to put a Nike box on her and it was uneven. A girlfriend caught me. She bought me a squatty potty last Christmas. That's how I'm getting healthier, guys. You guys need a squatty potty. Is what we're saying. Ah, ba, ba, ba. That was a dirty joke? Was that a dirty joke? Informative. It was informative, right? It wasn't too PSA. I like to put a PSA in my show. Okay, watch. October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. November, Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Ladies, what's the color for October? Pink. There's one, one woman that... <laughs> she said with a question mark, pink? I don't know. <laughs> I thought you guys are way more organized. You guys got whole football teams wearing pink and none of the ladies in here know what the pink is October <laughs> Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We don't even know. Man, what's their color? Blue. Blue balls, for reals, that's us. Blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> We're unorganized. Nobody cares about balls. Nobody cares. There's no little ribbon on yogurts for balls, okay? No, but they have whole football teams wearing pink shoelaces, and they have like the like a whole that like everybody's with the bracelets. I love the boobies. Everybody, like, like the boobies, save the breast, save the boobies, save the breast. Pink, pink, pink. Like, like not everybody was breastfed, but everybody comes from balls. Look. Just think about it. Look, I just want one volleyball team with a shirt that says I love balls. Just one. Just to make it fair. Just to make it fair. I look. I like to put a PSA in my shelf. <laughs> I'm from South Central Los Angeles. It's a miracle that I even am here. You guys don't even understand. Like I, I'm 40 years old. I'm 40 years old. Like when I was a little kid, <laughs> my teachers were like, "Hey Jamal, um." <laughs> You're probably gonna die of gangs or crack or police. And they gave me a basketball and I was like, okay. <laughs> but I'm not dead or in jail or on crack. Like I'm here telling jokes to you guys. It's fucking amazing to me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm halfway to being an old black man. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to get my purple suit. I can't wait to just sit on a bus stop. Stupid. <laughs> I just can't wait to be happy about other people's lives all day. I just can't wait. <laughs> just sit in a, <laughs> in a purple. I want a, I want a big ass hat. I want a big ass purple hat to go with the suit. And I, I want a fucking a feather. I want some kind of like an ostrich feather. And then I'm gonna get ostrich skin boots to go with the feather. And I just sit on a fucking bus stop all day. <laughs> and compliment people walking by. Hey, what, what you doing for yourself, boy? You, is that your backpack? You going to school? Look at you, education, that's right. <laughs> Go on, boy. Awesome. You, is that your girlfriend? Y'all together? Y'all not together? Oh, okay, you a player? Go on, boy. <laughs> Excuse me, blue dress, blue dress. Let me highlight you, blue dress, blue dress. So old black guys hit on me. They just call you by whatever you're wearing. Blue dress, hey, blue dress. I don't even have an old black guy voice yet. Have you heard two old black guys speaking? They sound like hijinks. They sound. <laughs> you ever hear it? Like it just sounds like somebody dragging cinder blocks down the street. Just what you do? I don't know. One day I'll get old, I'll get old. 
music in there. The more I complain about music, the older I get, I guess. <laughs> I live in Vancouver. It takes about 20 minutes to get here. It means I listen to about uh, 658 Drake songs in a row. <laughs> oh, shit. Like, who likes... Clap if you like Drake. Nobody wants to admit it now. Watching your old girl's diary. All of them. It sounds like he's just all hyped up in his room by himself drinking wine. Like, ooh, I can't stand it. Like, drinking wine from the bottom. Just fucking, I can't. Ooh, fucking. 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 Ooh, the quill and he dips in the inkwell and he's just I'm so angry and he just opens his diary. <laughs> Ever since you left the city, you yeah. just all caps. I'm just saying Drake is like um uh the softest rapper of all time. <laughs> like, you don't gotta be like a gangster. I love Tribe Called Quest. I love like, fuck, Digital Underground was like hard, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't gotta be like shooting people, but I'm just saying, he's about as soft as a natural double D breast cup. This, this is, this is soft, you know what I mean? This is soft, this is so soft. This is so, so what? And people like, people, that hurt his fans. They're like, he's the best battle rapper that's ever been. And I was like, really? Drake is the best battle rapper? What was one line? And somebody was like, he said something about Twitter fingers on his song one time. And I was like, Twitter fingers was as hot as the rap line. Have you ever heard Tupac? This opening line to dig the, to, to, to dissing Biggie Small. They didn't even play the song yet. The song didn't even come on yet. Before the beat drops, Tupac goes, that's why I fucked your bitch. And then the song drops and it's like, oh! My grandmother called me when that shit happened. Did you hear what Tupac said about Biggie? Mm-hmm. Fuck this bitch? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to check in on you, baby. I was like, why? I wish, um... <laughs> I wish Humpty helped with Battle Drake. I do. Yes. <laughs> Right? It's like somebody just paid him enough money to put the glasses on and the nose. And just like, is this the fool right here? Oh, you want me to get him? Alright, fuck it. Alright, look. Okay, look, stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. You a dummy. All you do is talk about your money, fool. What you do is advertise for thief. Now gather round. I'm a young fool that laid you down. Now my sound put you down in the underground. I drink a bowl of Hennessy you got on your shelf. Just let me introduce myself. My name is Humpty. Your eyebrows ugly. <laughs> Goes back to his diary. It's like, mm. <laughs> my fucking quill. <laughs> sorry, too much is me. I'm fantasizing. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do more material. I'm riffing. I'm sorry. I'm high. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, yeah. My mom's a crip. Do you guys have crips out here? My mom's a <laughs> like a legit. Fan. Did your mom spank you? My mom put me on the hood. She was like, hey, did you break my face? You go to the bank 18th Street now. Ah, got a tattoo on my back. It sucks. <laughs> your mom played oldies on Sundays. Uh, my mom played Snoop. And she smoked a blunt and drank a four. <laughs> she crib walked to the fucking biscuits. She's like, let me chip on these damn biscuits. She drink a four and she's like, Play a game of dice and fuck dominoes and burn the biscuits. That's why I'm skinny. Don't worry about it. Look. Um. <laughs> I appreciate it though. Like my mom was fucking hard. Like I could have, I could have been a drug dealer or a gangbanger or something. But like I was too scared of my mom slapping shit out of me, so I did it. So. Because she would come home every day and she would just slap my mom. My mom would come home every. Thank you so much. She would appreciate that. <laughs> That's right, clap for me. I'll beat his ass. That's right. Every day I'm dead, that's what she was like. I'm like, thanks, mom. Thank you so much. She, she would come home and just slap me and my brother, like, pat, pat. 
We were like, ow, what was that for? And she was like, that's for the shit I didn't catch you doing. I was like, shit, I stole the car today. How did you know? Because they got these sugar-coated moms nowadays. Some of you guys have one. You got to do all the fucking dumb shit I never got to do. Climb one of the damn furniture in the bank. <laughs> Some of you were those kids. Your mom just filling out the deposit like you ain't doing shit. Mom, before I got in the bank, my mom did this shit. We going in a place of business, don't say shit, you don't want shit, sit your ass down. That's a real mom. You got these moms out here with these kids, they're like, yo, oh, you fart rainbows, the curtains are on fire. You fart rainbows, you're the best. Thanks, mom. Curtains are on fire. <laughs> I've seen this kid and a group of kids, they're like doing all the group of kid voice, you know, just like the And then one little kid's voice came up, I was like, a Jamba Juice? And she was drinking her Starbucks. She was like, no, we can't get to the, uh, the Starbucks and the Jamba Juice because we still got to get your tickets and we got your friends and we're going to the Marvel movie and we don't have your seats yet and we can't. And the little kid was like, mommy, if you don't give me a Jamba Juice, you're a bitch. I was like, whoa. I pulled my phone out. I was like, world star. I was gonna get my views up. I was gonna get my likes up. I thought she was gonna come off the top bunk or the elbow. But she didn't. She went and bought a pajama juice. And I was like, what are you doing? You are a bitch. What are you doing? You gonna teach your kids that? Why would you ever allow your kids to talk to you like that or do anything remotely close to that? I remember one time, one time, one time, <laughs> when I was nine years old, I asked my mom to make me a sandwich nicely. One time. I was like, hey, mom, do you think you can make me a sandwich? And she looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> but she did it. But before she did it, she got up from the couch and she did like an old Negro spiritual hum. She was like, mm hmm mm. <laughs> She went in the kitchen and she made my favorite sandwich. It's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, triple decker. She like did the triple decker. She cut the crust off. She had the triangle napkin like a real adult. And she brought it on the couch and she sat next to me and she ate the sandwich. <laughs> And every single bite, she was telling me, what you need to do is learn how to make your own damn sandwiches. <laughs> so you'll have to rely on nobody to ever make sandwiches for you. And I was like trying not to cry, and I was nine, and I felt like I was 15 for some dumb reason. And my chest was all swollen up, and uh, you know, there's a lot of young men here. We get the chest swell up thing, and you like, I'm hard all of a sudden, but you're not really hard because you're still a little kid, so your chest is out, but your voice is still little. You're just like, I'm <laughs> I was like, I can't make it. And she was like, what'd you say? And I was like, I got all this courage in my heart. And I was like, I can't never get no sandwiches in this damn house. <laughs> and she was like, oh, okay. You can't get no, oh, okay. And she put the sandwich down. She was like, well, that's because this isn't a house, honey. This is Sparta! She kicked me in the chest. She hit the rest of the sandwich over my face. Crumbs were in my eyelashes. That's why I'm skinny. Don't worry about it. Look. And I'm saying is I appreciate your mom. Is what I'm saying. You gotta appreciate man. Appreciate your mom, but you gotta appreciate your life. You gotta appreciate your life. It's the whole thing, right? You gotta appreciate your life. Let me tell you something. I when I turned 38, I called my mom. My birthday is May 21st. I called my mom on May 7th, which is Mother's Day, and I pretended to like her for Mother's Day to see what she was gonna give me for my birthday. <laughs> and she taught me a valuable lesson about appreciating my life. Cause I was like, hey mom, I love you so much. You're the bestest in the world. You did everything so good. Ooh, you're the best. Hey, what you gonna give me for my birthday? And she was like, get you something for your birthday. <laughs> she laughed like a super villain. <laughs> I gave you life, be happy I didn't swallow you. And she hung up. I appreciate your mom because she didn't swallow you, okay? Appreciate your life, you're here, you made it. I cried for 45 minutes, I cried for 45 minutes. And I was like, afterwards I was like, <laughs> you know what though? She didn't swallow me, though. <laughs> I went and kissed her right now. I was like, Mwah, thank you so much, mommy. And I thought about it. I was like, you know what? All of us were like sales. All of us were psychos. All of us were just like in the balls, right? We were just like, just 
We were just chilling in the bus. And then the gun went off, right? And I was like, bah, oh shit, it's going off. And he was like, ah! And then, but everybody in here, you were the one that was like, fuck this, I'ma be somebody. Ah! You kicked the white blood cell in the face and you was juking everybody and you went and downloaded the Life app. And then you was like, how do you get in the egg? And then you were born, that's a miracle. Now we're smoking weed in here, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I just like life, I guess, I don't know. I try to tell my nephews about life. I'm like, hey, appreciate your life. They're like nine and fucking seven. I was like, hey guys, I'm leaving. I'm going to Oregon. I probably won't see you again. I want you guys to remember all the lessons I taught you and just appreciate your life and all the gifts that life gives you. And they're like, uh, SpongeBob on, shut up. I was like, oh, shut up, man. Because kids don't really understand, like, uh, like anything unless you actually buy them something. I was trying to teach them a gift about, or teach them a life gift, teach them a lesson about life and gifts. So I actually went and bought them gifts, right? They like Toy Story. I got them a giant uh, Buzz Lightyear doll. Got them a giant uh, Cowboy Woody doll. I wrapped them up and I just throw them in their room. And they're like, what is this? And I was like, it's not Christmas, it's not your birthday. This is what life is, life is a gift. Just open it up and be excited every single day. They're like, well, you just, this is for us? And they start getting all frantic with the paper. And they're like, oh. They start noticing that it's Toy Story, so they're starting to get that little kid demon voice. It's like, oh, it's Toy to Story. It got, it got, oh, 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 it got, it got more, oh, oh. And I'm just throwing the holy water on them, letting them open their gifts. And he finally got it all open, and I was like, this is what it is, guys. You see how excited you guys are? This is what life is. This is what life is about every single day. Just remember, life is a big buzz and a big woody. <laughs> I'm creepy Uncle Jamal now. I can't go back. I can't. Oh, yeah. I miss my brother, my nephews, and my family. They're cool. I don't miss my brother's wife. Ugh, what a dick, right? Um, what else do I like? Oh, my lady's here. Say hi to her. She's around here somewhere. She's awesome. I wouldn't be here, I guess, if it wasn't for her. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an embarrassing story I should tell about her. Is she still over there? Oh, hey! So I stopped drinking. <laughs> Not because of my health or anything like that. Uh, uh, because I accidentally proposed to my girlfriend. <laughs> so let me tell you this story. Uh, <laughs> This is what you don't do. Uh, first of all, I, I'm a comedian. I've been doing comedy for like 10 years. I did an interview on a podcast called Drunk Talk, and the point was to get drunk and talk. I did that. I killed it. I got drunk and talked. I, I, they gave me a big ass pimp cup of tequila. I don't, this is me naked. This is, I can't drink that much tequila. <laughs> I don't have the fucking, like if a tequila bear comes and it just jumps on me and it's like, you're drunk, bro. Ah. <laughs> Like, I was cool in the Uber. I was cool. They give you an Uber ride home. It's very responsible. They give you, I was like, hey, thanks, Abdul, for the ride. And I started feeling all nauseous and sick, and I'm just doing the fucking drunk walk, and I'm doing rubbing on all the apartment doors, trying to find my door. <laughs> and I get to this mine door, and I'm like pulling up the keys. I don't know if you guys do this. If you get hammered, I try to do like one eye, I try to see if I can. <laughs> Focus better than I was trying to switch the other eye. It never works. I'm dropping the keys. My girlfriend opens the door. She's like, oh my God, Jamal, are you hammered? And I'm like, MC Hammer. <laughs> she didn't think it was funny at all. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, go lay down. Go lay down. I was like, no. I got the munchies and I want to eat some food. And I did the drunk munchies. I don't know if you guys do this, the drunk munchie burrito. I make a drunk burrito. And it's basically a tortilla with leftovers that are in some chips. Yeah. And you microwave it for a minute and a half or three hours, one of the two. <laughs> it's either nuclear or frozen when you eat it. Doesn't matter, you never finish it because your stomach gets hot from all the tequila. 
<laughs> That's what happened to me. I'm halfway through the burrito and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. And I went to the bathroom and I was like, huh, huh, no, I gotta shit. <laughs> nope, I gotta throw up. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I went for the deuce. So I was like, yeah, this is a smart idea. And I threw up in both my pet legs. <laughs> That's what you don't do in the first year of your relationship. Be too drunk to help yourself on the toilet and scream for help from your girlfriend. Don't do it. Don't do this. I had the saint next to me. I was like, oh, that's, like that. that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> comes to the bathroom, she's like, oh my god, I'm not supposed to see this. She just closed the door. <laughs> so the other side of the door, like, I'm not supposed to see this. You need to help yourself, babe. I can't see, I can't, I can't unsee what I saw. Are, are your balls always inside the toilet? Are they... <laughs> She just threw in some plastic bags and towels and she closed the door. Oh She's like, take a shower and clean yourself. <laughs> and I was like, uh, mm. I just took a shower, put the towels on the floor, went straight to bed, didn't clean shit. <laughs> Slept like a champion. <laughs> no hangover. Woke up refreshed the next day, like, ooh. Mm, wow, I was expecting to be a lot hurting from all that tequila, but not really, I just don't remember much. Tell me all the magic that happened last night. She was laying on the pillow next to me, like, good morning, Jamal, hi. Oh, you wanna know what happened last night? Oh, no, nothing, it just, um, you ruined the entire kitchen with your drunk burrito, and then you went into the bathroom and you shit and piss everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere, it's throw up everywhere. I cleaned it all of it up. I cleaned it all up. I washed your clothes. I folded your clothes. I dried your clothes. I put them away, and I was like, "Fine, I'll marry you." And then we had to move to Vancouver. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, a lot of times, people like to. Um, come to comedy do shows and comedians tell like a lot of personal stories and shit like that. Um, you guys don't always get to go home and tell jokes to other people, but I wrote a couple street jokes for you to tell to other people. Okay? It's for you guys. It's to say that you wrote, not me. <laughs> and don't do them at work because you'll get fired. <laughs> don't be like, Jamal took that it wasn't me. All right, that was, uh, that was consensus, you guys agreed. Okay, good. Uh, we'll start easy for you. It's a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? Doctor Who. Doctor Who. I prefer to be called a gynecologist. <laughs> These are for you, I didn't write this joke. You wrote this joke. <laughs> I'm a comedian because I do dumb shit all day long. I'm just like, this is a good idea, this is stupid, and then I go do it. Like today, like, all right, I'm gonna do another, I'll do another one for you guys, but today I wrote down, I wrote down, I have a lot of anxiety, and it makes me turn into a different character. And then I sat around and I go, this is funny to me. And this is what, what the joke comes out to me as like, hey, I just walked into somebody and I accidentally walked in someone and I have such bad anxiety. I haven't written the joke yet. <laughs> I just wrote it today, calm down. I have such bad anxiety and this is how I write the jokes. And then, and then I literally just go, Arrgh. Now what noise is that? I don't know. Then I go, oh, that sounds like Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I go, now I, ju I just go, I bumped into somebody today and I got so nervous that I turned into Louis Armstrong. And then I'm going, uh, hey, sorry, I didn't mean to touch your boobies. Uh, please don't be to be, shooby dooby doo. And, then, uh, and that's my weird ass brain in comedy. Okay, so. Oh, God. Here's a, here's a horrible joke for you guys to tell at work. Um, <laughs> Not in front of HR, you get fired. Um, what's the difference between John Wayne and Jack Daniels? Jack Daniels is still killing Indians. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an alcoholism joke, you got it. Now let's go to the casino and save them, all right? Let's do it. Let's get in line, I got a party bus outside. We'll all go together. Well, yes, sir. Right in front of you is an Indian. Is it a good joke? That's a great joke. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I care about. Did you laugh? <laughs> if you didn't, I'll run after the show. <laughs> I'm really fast. You can't catch me. And I'm running. I just, just pull this shit down and just walk like this. You won't even see me. <laughs> Ninja Van is. <laughs> supposed to be leaving. Okay. Um, I guess I should just go. Uh, <coughs> uh, should I leave with another joke? Actually, yeah. what, 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 what other joke should I tell? Smoke your weed with your parents. Oh, right. We did a weed show and talk about weed at all. <laughs> Does anybody smoke weed with their parents? Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. yeah? Yeah. That's, I feel sorry for everybody who does not smoke with their parents. Like, <laughs> it means your parents don't love you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are they squares? Get them high. Just get them like an edible first. Get them, get them, you know, you know how they got you in. They'll sit there and drink all night long. They're, oh, just, you need tincture then. Just put it in there. <laughs> He's like, this is the best beer ever. That's right, because THC's in it. Now switch over. Just get them like a, like a, like a weed beer. No? I'm trying to help you out. I don't, I don't know why. My parents, I, I, I didn't grow up in a household where it was not bad to smoke weed. I never... Like, uh, you know, so I was talking to some people earlier today about the weed commercial used to come on in the 90s and we used to laugh at them because those were like, if you smoke weed and any of that shit happened in the commercial, it would be like a superpower. That would be awesome if I could talk to my dog or de deflate. That would be a fucking amazing. Yeah, I never grew up with people going, don't fucking, my mom was never like, don't smoke weed. She was always like, don't smoke my weed. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then all we would do is like sneak in there and try to roll the joint and roll this fucking <laughs> half paper balled up, just it burnt, you know how it happened. So when in my 20s, my early 20s, me and my friends stayed up all night drinking, going to strip clubs before my friend's graduation. And it had a bright idea to, for me to ask my gangster ass mom for some weed so we could calm down and go to his graduation. He was like, hey, Jamal, go ask your mom for some weed. And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> She is mean as fuck. I don't want to wake her up at 6 o'clock in the morning. She was like, but it's for weed, though. And I was like, all right, fine. And I was like, hey, Mom, do you think... <clears throat> Sorry, we could, uh, Mom, do you think we could borrow a little bit of your weed so we could calm down uh, so we can go to James's uh, graduation party? A <laughs> graduation thing thing? And she was like, what? I was like, I'm sorry, we didn't, I, I'll call the police on myself. I didn't mean it, I'm sorry. She's like, well, you want some weed? Hell yeah! She started rolling joints for everybody. She was like, here you go, here you go. She was doing smoke tricks and shit. She was smoking, she had a blunt this long and smoked it until it mission impossible. She just <laughs> blowing out, she was doing Popeye shit. She was blowing out clouds into warships. She was doing that old school shit, old school weed smokers do. You guys hold the joint forever and just sip the air, just <laughs> I was like, Mom, smoke the blunt. She hit the blunt one time and she started contemplating. She had this like deep thought face. She was just like. <sighs> Do you 
want me to cook everything you've ever loved? I was like, yes, yes. Yes, I do. We had peanut butter, jelly, waffles, and tacos. It's fucking amazing. It's fucking amazing. You sound like a, a, a ghost being tickled. That shit is... <laughs> smoke weed and he knew I smoke weed but we never smoke weed with each other we would just kind of have this Mexican stand up all the time <laughs> you know he'd be like oh my god Jamal are you high right now I'm like no dad are you high right now no Merry Christmas want to play chess for three hours yep <laughs> sometime in my 30s my dad came up to me and he was like hey Jamal I need your help in the car he's like you already brought everything in he's like come on outside and help me. I was like, okay, fine. And then he was like, sit in the back seat. And I was like, okay, this is weird. And he sat in the front seat. And I was like, that's even more weird. <laughs> and he turned around. He had this little golden Ziploc bag. And he had this golden, and he just opened it up and he put out an old school metal pipe, like a baseball bat shaped kind of pipe. And he pulled it out. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. He's gonna, I'm about to smoke weed with my dad. We're gonna forgive everything we've ever done to each other and eat snacks. It's gonna be great. Pulled out this pipe and he's like, here you go, son. And I hit the weed and I'm like, God damn, this is good, dad. You got some really good weed. This is really great. And I gave it back to him and he put it in the Ziploc bag and was like, mm-hmm, and got out the car. <laughs> Spent the next 30 minutes in the car looking for wires and video cameras. <laughs> the fuck did he do, eh? <laughs> Weed is awesome. It's uh, an amazing substance on the planet. Uh, a lot of human beings are just now discovering they have an endocannabinoid system. We all have one. Everybody has one. And you know that you have one. Uh, if you don't know what it does, it like regulates the homeostasis of your body. How often you sleep, you rest, your how horny you get, your sex. It regulates all that shit. The more you smoke, the more endocannabinesia coverage you get to get, like make sure you're in the perfect balance of being alive and well-being. That being said, there's a lot of motherfuckers out there that have an endocannabinesia deficiency. <laughs> they, need, they have a THC deficiency. You can recognize them because they're the people who steal your cups at fucking Starbucks. They're the people that lay on their horn for no fucking reason. They're the people that can't leave the sticks out of their ass when they come into a comedy show and have a good time. <laughs> so do yourself a favor, puff, puff, and pass. My name is Jamal Coleman, have a good one. Thank you, Angela. 16th for the uh, the uh, North the this thing, the Canna Family Feud. Boys, Boomer and the Boys. That's right. Who had a good time tonight? Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. Mom was funny as fuck. The guy's hilarious. I love it. Well, uh, obviously stick around. Uh, Jamal's gonna be here, I'm sure, for a little bit. He's got, there's another comedy, there's a comedy show festival going on in town. It's a whole bunch of stuff, so stick around, uh, get high, more high, enjoy some music. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, Black Friday comedy show, right? Yeah. Woo! Nailed it! Uh, alright, perfect. Well, you guys all, thank you on behalf of The Real Hijinks and Jamal Coleman and myself, Boomer. You guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow for the Country Line Dancing Mail Review. Bring it!